an honor for me to introduce His Eminence uh, to you today. He is a good friend of uh, the congregation, and he has been very willing and generous with his time to come all the way from Rome last night just to be with us today and tomorrow, and Monday he will be traveling back to Rome. Cardinal Schaka was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Marquette and served there as a parish priest and then in the Chancery Office for 17 years before, at the age of 43, he was appointed the first Bishop of Gaylord, Michigan. He served for 10 years in that capacity as Bishop of Gaylord when he was appointed Archbishop of uh, Detroit, Michigan. During his time as Archbishop, he was elevated and created a Cardinal of the Church. He served in Detroit for nine years and provided distinguished service in that Archdiocese, which is so close in history to our own uh, diocese here at Fort Wayne South Bend. Cardinal Schaka was called to Rome by Pope John Paul II and asked to take charge of all Vatican finances. And they were in the red when he arrived there. And after about four years, they came out into the black, and they've been in the black ever since. So Cardinal Schaka is a very talented man and administrator. Just a year ago, the Pope asked Cardinal Schaka if he would be the president of the Pontifical Council for Vatican City State. What that means is that the Cardinal is the governor of Vatican City State and is responsible for everything that goes on in the Vatican City, except for the Swiss Guard. But everything else is under his direction. <laughs> and so it's a, it really is an honor and a privilege to introduce to you someone who is a very close collaborator of our Holy Father, someone who is a, a counselor on a consistent basis with our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II. So without further ado, Your Eminence, uh, His Eminence, uh, Edmund Cardinal Schaffer. will be done to stimulate change. 
I have very briefly described this gloomy and complex situation, not to discourage, but rather to place the Alliance for Catholic Education, and in particular, the 75 or so students who will participate in the program this year, in a perspective of hope and encouragement, which is rooted in our Catholic Christian faith. If anything is going to change, if we are to have a better society, a world at peace, the effort for change must begin with me. <coughs> you young men and women who have volunteered to give two years of your life to serve in the most under-resourced Catholic elementary and secondary schools in our country have chosen to make a difference. You have chosen to begin with me. You have been and are being academically prepared. You have learned and will learn even more the meaning of community life and its responsibilities. And you have experienced a spiritual formation which will enable you not only to grow personally, but to bring the special dimension of your faith, your hope, and your love to your teaching. You will be able to see in every one of your students the image of God. You will be able to see the face of Christ in each of their faces, and they will be able to see the face of Christ in yours. Your years at Notre Dame have given you an education which has sought, sought not only to prepare you intellectually, but also to teach and inspire you to live with deep conviction the spiritual realities we embrace with our faith. Teaching for you will not simply be a profession. It will be a mission, a call from Christ, to give your students an education that will help them to live their lives fully, holistically. To be more precise, you will teach them to live a life of faith in the face of all the human needs and pressures that confront them every day. Your task will be to speak the truth. It was Jesus himself who said to those who believed in him, If you live according to my teaching, you are truly my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. My dear young teachers, your lives during the next two years will be a rewarding experience for you, as well as a blessing for your students. But it will not always be easy. There will be problems and difficulties of various <coughs> kinds. It will be easy to see the face of Christ in a pretty little girl with a clean dress and a nice smile. It will be much more difficult to see Jesus in the little girl with unkempt hair, a dirty dress, and a runny nose. Not all your colleagues will necessarily share your ideals and principles, nor will, all, nor will they all appreciate your idealism. But as our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, has urged us over and over again, be not afraid. Be not afraid. You are not alone. You do not walk alone. You do not work alone. You do not live alone. St. Paul expressed the deepest conviction we should have. I have been crucified with Christ, and the life I live now is not my own. Christ is living in me. I still live my human life, but it is a life of faith in God who loved me and gave himself 
for me. My young friends, I express to you my esteem, my admiration, and my best wishes as you embark on this new adventure, an adventure of faith. I join you in praying for the success of this great enterprise. You can make a difference to the children you will teach, to the community in which you will live, and to our whole country, which we all love. May God bless you, sustain you, comfort you, and console you. May he say to you again and again, as he said to his disciples, it is I, do not be afraid. Thank you.